Hi everyone and welcome to a video about jacking your vehicle up off-road. I'm going to look at two main options here, the bottle jack combination versus the high lift jack combination. When I say combination, I mean that when well, you can't really use a jack just by itself, you've got to have some other accessories with it. So we're going to um, work through those as well. All right, so let's take a look at some of the options we've got for um, jacking our vehicles up off-road because that will happen. You will get a puncture, you will need to change wheels. Now, a lot of people have the OEM jack and that can work. Sometimes it's good quality, sometimes it's pretty poor quality as my Ford Ranger one is just just basically bust so in a lot of cases it's replaced with a bottle jack like this which is 4,000 kilograms rated so plenty of weight that's more than my Ranger weighs all up but a um, couple of disadvantages it's not super tall and the um, top isn't um, particularly great for getting underneath axles it can easily slip off so what I do is I put the road safe attachment on which either gives you a bit of height like that or a bit of extra um, leverage like so. So that's one option. Um, another option is the good old high lift jack which um, we have here. Now this is much maligned but it will do a really good job of jacking your vehicle up. But the problem with that is is that very few vehicles have actually got a suitable location for jacking the vehicle up with a high lift jack but there's a solution to that and it's this which is the jack mate so that basically goes around the vehicle's wheels and you jack up with the jack and then you're able to change a wheel except of course when you're jacking it up how do you then get to the wheel nuts well the answer is if you carry an axle stand, you can then slot the axle stand underneath that um, uh, wheel and then change it. Now, we all know that we shouldn't get underneath a vehicle and work on it when you're, it's on any form of jack, so having an axle stand is not a bad idea anyway. I like this particular one from, uh, from Baco because it's completely um, disconnectable, so you can take that out. And you can even also um, pull this out of the base as well. like so. Now I don't know if you'd ever want to do that uh, but I just like the fact it's disconnected but at the very least it's good for storage and who knows you might want to put something else in there use this for some other purpose don't know it's it's pretty good and it only weighs 2.1 kilograms as well so that's a bonus for me. I also like the fact that um, because it's of the locking pin variety here that means if you turn it upside down or whatever else, it doesn't come out. Where some of the other designs, if you turn them upside down and do that, as you might do when it's off-road, it all starts to come apart. Now, if we want to turn that into a winching system as well, then we need something like a drag chain here, which is from Iron Man. Just comes in this handy bag there. The advantage of a drag chain is that you can actually vary the length of the of in effect the rope um, or in this case the chain whereas with a normal strap it's really hard to do that but with this you can actually easily change the uh, the length of it and that's important because with the high lift jack when you winch with it you've, you can only winch about a meter which is you know kind of the length of the jack so you're constantly having to reposition the jack and change things again. Right, I'm going to show how to lift a vehicle wheel up using a high lift jack and the jack mate and um, then that will allow us to slide the jack stand underneath so we can either work on the vehicle or change the tyre. So first thing you've got to do is um, understand how the jack mate works so these two hooks go on the spokes of the wheel and then up it comes with the high lift jack so we'll get that into position so easier to have a helper here but you can do it by yourself so what we'll do is just roughly lift it up to approximately where it needs to be. So I pull the latch up like that. And it's probably going to need to be about there-ish. So I'll put the oops, put the latch about there for the moment. And then that goes like so. Let's talk about how the lift mate or the jack mate actually attaches to the high lift jack. So slides on over the head like that and you can see there's a bit of a lip here to basically stop it going in or out and that works pretty well. Now there is also supplied of it this bolt and a nut on the end of it, a nylock nut, um, which should go through that hole and then 
through this hole on the jack to stop it sliding in um, or out. The problem with that is though that um, there's a bit of a mismatch between where the hole is on the attachment and actually on the high lift jack so it doesn't actually slide through. So um, to get around that what I've done is I've just um, used this um, smaller high tensile um, bolt and that will hopefully slide through there like that and then we can just put a um, washer on it and a nut and then um, um, your way so then that just gives a positive lock to stop it sliding um, in, or, in or out. Then it goes up against the vehicle now you can see that those hooks are going to go around the wheel spokes that's nowhere near high enough so we'll just take it up a bit Okay, it's probably getting back to where it needs to be, so we'll latch that back in. Again, it's a lot easier if you've got a helper with you, but I don't, so there we go. All right, now that's probably going to be starting, no, not quite, to take up the slack. fiddly thing okay now we're starting to take up the slack so you can see here I've got the hooks firmly in the um, spokes of the ranger's wheel and you can start to see that we're actually going to uh, lift the vehicle up now this is where the high lift jack starts to get dangerous Okay, so for high lift jack safety, two things. You've got to assume that the handle will move here. You never want to be in the way of the handle here. So you never want to stand like that with a high lift jack. Always stand to one side and you can use leverage that way. The other thing to assume is that the vehicle may fall off the jack that way or that way. So you don't want to be standing here or the other way around. So the safe area, or the safest area is about here. And obviously you'd be um, chocking all three wheels of the vehicle, putting it in low range first or reverse, um, and um, pulling the pipe brake hard on. So let's going to just start to lift it down and just take nice easy strokes all the way up. And whenever you're not using a high lift jack, always return it to that um, safety position there. Never leave the jangle half halfway down. And you can see there the tyre is now fully off the ground. Alright, so again, this is the danger area here, don't want to get in that place. So this is the point at which you'd grab your um, axle stand, put it underneath the vehicle, and then um, you would be able to come down off the jack, remove the wheel, put the other wheel on, and then reverse the operation to get it off the jack. Alright, so to bring the load down, we switch that to the unload position and just carefully lower it back down like so. And as always with high lift jacks, once there's no load on it, then it's liable to drop down quickly. So you've got to be aware of that. So there we go. So that's that done. That goes like that. We lock it into position and that's our high lift jack completed. And then that comes out as well. 
All right, so let's take a brief look at air jacks then, or exhaust jacks. Now these are jacks which are basically in giant inflatable bags you place underneath your vehicle and you connect to your exhaust and then use the exhaust to inflate the bag and up comes the vehicle. I'm not a massive fan of them for a couple of different reasons. First of all, it's difficult to get underneath the vehicle in many um, situations. Then they do require the engine to be running, which is a real problem with manuals because then you're just purely reliant on the park brake in order to stabilize the vehicle. And these jacks are not great for stability, which is the next problem they're literally a bag and it's therefore not um, really great for, for stability um, you also find exhaust tips do vary they're different diameters and if you have a twin exhaust you need to bring a bung for the second exhaust otherwise you get back pressure and nothing will happen to the exhaust jack um, they can be damaged either by the vehicle and they can also damage the vehicle if you jack up on the wrong part and they can be damaged on the ground um, as well and they're also fairly hard to raise just one corner of the vehicle because you typically can't place them in an area that allows um, to do that as well. So in my view they're best used as a recovery device um, for specific situations and not as a general purpose jack. I do own one, I've never really taken it on many trips but I have used it in anger so that's, uh, that's my recommendation with air or exhaust jacks. All right, so let's summarize the high lift jack kit versus the bottle jack kit then. And we can start off by looking at um, how much it can lift. So the high lift jack is good for lifting a, a bit over two tons, given the average four wheel drive, even when heavily loaded, is probably no more than three and a half, maybe four tons. That should be fine. You're only lifting um, at most um, maybe half of the vehicle, but often about a quarter or a third. The bottle jack, however, does beat that. It's up to four tons, and obviously you can get greater ones as well, maybe up even to 10 tons, just cost, weight, and size. Lift height, the high lift jack combination um, beats the bottle jack quite handily, it can go up a lot taller. Um, that said, I am not a fan of using a high lift jack all the way up to its full 900 meter, or 900 millimeter even extension, and you can get jacks which are even taller than that, but height wise, the, lift, the jack, high lift jack definitely wins. Can you use it as a winch? Yes, you can use the high lift jack as a winch. Um, it is effective, um, only winches a meter at a time. You can obviously put a snatch block or ring on it and get a double line um, pull advantage. Um, you can't do that at all with a bottle jack. Can you break beads? Um, the high lift jack's really good at breaking beads. The bottle jack can actually be used to break beads. It is difficult, have done it, um, but wouldn't recommend it. Um, you can lift wheels for recovery with a high lift jack quite easily. You're working outside of the vehicle. You don't need to get underneath it where it might be um, hung up on rocks or ruts or something like that. Often when you need to lift a vehicle to get something underneath the wheel, you physically cannot get a bottle jack underneath it. Whereas with a high lift jack, if you're working with a jack mate slash lift mate attachment outside, then, then you can do that. So can you bend, compress and pull? Well, bottle jack, not really. High lift jack, yeah, that's kind of what it's made for. You can bend all sorts of things or compress all sorts of things back into shape. Can you safely work underneath it? Well, with the combination we've got on the left, yes, you can, because I put an axle stand in there. You could, of course, add an axle stand to the bottle jack combination and safely work underneath it as well. Never, ever work underneath a vehicle purely supported by a jack. Now, the total weight here is 16.7 kilos for the high lift jack, the lift mate and the axle stand, but it's only 5.4 for the bottle jack, so clearly that wins, and also it's more compact as well. Also wins on price because you're looking at $400 for the high lift kit, whereas the bottle jack is about half that but it's a it's a basically a question of um, trade-off and functions because you know with the high lift jack combination you can I think it's a better better jack than a bottle jack you can winch you can um, break beads you can do various different things for it and with the Axel saying you can work underneath the car safely. So I think it's more flexible and for me that's worth paying the two hundred dollars an extra ten kilograms for. Alright, so let's summarise where um, things are with, with jacks then. And the first thing is there is no one answer. It really depends on you and your vehicle, um, how even how fit you are as well, the sort of terrain you're going into. Now, OEM jacks are sometimes good, but often they're not tall or strong enough for four-wheel drive use because manufacturers build them down to a price, particularly if you've got a lifted or heavier four-wheel drive. You find the OEM jack um, often lacking. Always secure your vehicle with a chock and or strap or dig a hole out for the diagonal wheel. That's the best wheel to jack. To, to, um, jack there. Understand how your jacks work, that's really important, and take a flat base to avoid whatever jack you've got sinking into the ground. And always consider multifunction use, and that's one of the reasons I like the high lift jack, it really is a multifunction device. And always look for the lightest weight and most compact options as well. And finally, maintain your kit, always really important. So thanks for watching, and um, please subscribe to my channel for more content on four-wheel drives, cars, towing, and whatever else I can find interesting.